Hi everyone, this video is about crimping a modular end onto a Cat5e cable. So you've got your Cat5e cable, got your modular end with the little eight gold pins in it. Uh, so what do we need? We need the cable, we need a couple of ends, or at least one end. Uh, you'll need a crimping tool, uh, you'll need a pair of lineman scissors. If you don't have these, you probably can still get by, but these are a lot more suited to the task. And then ideally, once we're done, if you have some kind of a tester, a cable tester doesn't have to be a cable certifier not one of those two thousand dollar machines but just a simple little thirty dollar cable tester you can get at the big box hardware stores that will let you verify that the cable you made is in fact correctly uh, pinned out and all the uh, connections are okay all right let's get started we take our cable and we want to uh, strip off some of the end Usually, oh, I like to work with about a couple inches to begin with. That's not what we'll finally end up with, but it gives me more room to play around with. I take my scissors and I gently graze the outside of the cable. Uh, a more professional way to do it would be to graze the outside of the cable, reach inside, there's a little pull string in there, and you can make a little, in fact, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate that for you. Uh, you can make a little nick in the cable like this. Just a little bitty notch enough for the uh, string to fit in and then what you do is you take the string that's in there it's called rip cord or rip string sometimes slangly recalled dental floss you pull back and what it does is it strips it makes a little hole all the way down and then what you can do is you can bend back the jacket the reason I don't like this method although it is kind of preferred in best practice the reason I don't like it is because then when I try to cut off the end of the the, the jacket that I don't need I end up with this kind of like mangled looking end here like this. So I prefer doing the light grays and you know, depending on the type of cable you work with, sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's not, but it makes a nice round even jacket cut there. Okay, get rid of the red of my rest of my dental floss there. All right, so what I'm left with is the exposed wires. Now ideally what we want to have happen by the time we're done with this is we want the, the modular end to fit all the way down so that some of the jacket is actually inside the modular end. Whereas we don't want this kind of a scenario where we've got bare wire exposed between the modular end and the place where we cut the jacket. All right, let's put our wires into place. Uh, so starting from left to right. So we're gonna think of this as, as we're staring down on top of the pins, looking into the butt of the, of the connector. All right, so the connector's facing away from us. We're looking up inside of it and we're gonna go from left to right. And I'm going to do this in what's called 568B style. There's also another style called 568A, but I'll demonstrate B. And actually, if you want, I'll put you a little link here in the video where you can go and see my little explanation about the difference between A and B. And I have heard that there's absolutely no difference in speed. Okay, we want to have white orange and then orange. Then next we want to split up the green and we want to end up with uh, white green. And then we want the uh, dark blue, I'm sorry, that we want the solid blue followed by the white blue. And actually there's a cute little trick you can do, I'm not doing it right now, there's a cute little trick where you can take the end of a cutoff jacket thing and you can stick it on this wire and make it unfold real quickly. So, all right, so we've got white orange, orange, white green, then I've got solid blue right here. And then I've got the white blue. And as I do this, I kind of tend to kind of stretch them. Well, not really stretch them, but kind of pull on them and bend them. It helps kind of massage them into place. Then I want to have the solid green. And then lastly is my brown pair. And I'll want to do white brown and then solid brown. Okay. So just to recap one more time, you want to really make sure you pay attention to this when you do this, because once you crimp down, you can't undo it. So, you know, these little, these little guys, depending on where you can get them, can cost anywhere from, you know, 10 cents to maybe as much as 50 cents a piece. So you don't want to waste these. All right, so let's just recheck. I've got white, orange, and then orange, white, green, and then solid blue, white, blue, then I've got solid green, I've got white, orange, and then I've got, I'm sorry, I've got white, brown, and then I've got solid brown. All right, and that, like I said, as I was doing this, I'm kind of like taking my fingers and pulling them like this because it helps flatten them out. So obviously we don't want all this cable, so I'm going to trim this. And the way I usually do this is about 
about just a little less than the width of my finger. So between the edge of that jacket and where I'm going to cut is about, oh, just slightly less than the width of my finger. So I just grab it and I hold it flat like that. I take the scissors, I go straight across. Um, I know some of you are thinking if you've done this before that they make a tool just for this. I'm old school, this is the way I do it. Now pay attention, after you make that cut, make sure you hold on tightly so that you keep those things just the way we laid them out because you don't want them to get mixed up. And then here's where is the real tricky part for newbies, for people who first start doing this. So you may have to do this more than once before you get it right. You want to take and put these into the back of the connector. The gold pins are facing up, okay? And as you hold it, you kind of want to press the wires down against the bottom so that they all stay in place. So I know I might have made that look easy, but it, it's tricky and it takes a few times. But ideally when you're done, you want to do one more visual inspection to make sure we still got white orange and then solid orange, white green, then solid blue, white blue, solid green, white brown, and then brown. Also another thing you can do is you can look at the very front. I don't know if this comes out on the camera, but if you look at the very front, and, it, and again, it doesn't play out well on camera, but you should be able to see the, the copper ends kind of staring at you through the glass there. So the other thing you can do is you can look on the back and you can get kind of a better picture of, of that all the wires are reaching the end. So that's important too. Make sure all your wires are reaching all the way to the end because if they're not, what will happen is when you crimp, these little gold things, when you crimp down, they pierce the copper. But if your wire doesn't come up far enough, it won't make it. All right, so take your modular... <clears throat> crimper whatever type you have again these are something you can get online um, you can get them uh, also at the big box hardware stores you put it into the spot for the eight crimp so this is an eight a six a four so I'll put this in that spot right there and I'm gonna crimp down and go as far as it can go and then I let up and now it's crimped so what happens is all the gold pins in here they go down and they force themselves into the copper, which makes the connection. And then also simultaneously in the back, there's a little plastic tab, which is being forced down, which is biting into the jacket. It doesn't damage the cable, but it bites into the jacket enough to provide that, that uh, security there, okay? So if you did this right, you're not gonna have any exposed cable back here. A Little bit of your jacket, about, about oh, a little more than a quarter of an inch of your jacket should be inside the connector. Okay, let's do the other end to recap, and then we'll give it a quick test. Okay, I've got white orange, solid orange, white green. On my blue, I want to have my solid blue and then my white blue. And then I want my solid green. Sometimes you have to play around a little bit with the way that you swing the wires back and forth between each other to get them as flat as possible. And then with the brown, I want to have white brown and then solid brown. Stretch them out, flatten them out, make my cut. Put my connector on. That one didn't behave as well as I wanted it to. Flatten them out, try again. Making one more check to make sure they're all the way I want them. That's actually a little bit slanted. See how that's a little slanted? Let's trim that up a little better. There we go. Push that in all the way. Make my crimp. Alright, let's test this. 
So you get your little tester. Again, this is not a certifier. This is all this is is just a continuity tester. These are anywhere from you can get these online for as little as ten bucks, and they're really nice if you do this kind of work often. Okay, turn on my tester. Okay, looks like I'm good. One, two, three, four. Okay, great. And that is how you crimp a Cat 5E cable. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the exact same process applies if you're doing a Cat 6 cable.